Now you can hear me? Yes. Um, hi, everyone. So today, I want to tell you a story. I was in Seattle last year. I had the opportunity to go to the Starbucks Reserve Roastery. If you have never been to a Starbucks Reserve Roastery, you probably want to know there are like only six or seven of them. One is in Italy. And the coffee is awesome. Like, if you're a coffee lover, you need to go there. Like, you get, they even have a library about coffee. So you definitely want to try one. And there is one in Seattle, obviously. So I was there, like, enjoying a coffee. And I wanted to do, like, a little bit of work. So I sit down, open my laptop, and, uh, and then start checking my notifications, checking GitHub issues, checking Discord. And then I start seeing, like, a lot of people write me. Like, there might be something odd going on. And some users were reporting that their Android builds were not working at all. So basically, people will run React Native run Android. And one minute ago, everything was fine. Like, they were able to build the app. And then one minute after, they were not. This is quite bad from the developer experience point of view. You want builds that are reproducible, no? Like, if my code compiles, how come it does co doesn't compile anymore one minute after? And, and yeah, like, we started investigating a bit. And then we saw in the error message that looks something like that, that people, like, on older versions on React Native, say, like, on React Native 68, were seeing references of uh, could not find uh, this version of React Native, which is 0.71.0 RC0. And, and then we started thinking, OK, maybe we have a problem here. And uh, I really had a problem, because I had a flight to take. I was supposed to fly back to London like in two or three hours. And, uh, and that, that's when I realized that, yeah, uh, we broke React Native. My name is Nicola Corti. I work as an Android engineer in the React Native team. You can find me online as Cortinico. And today, I'm happy to tell the story about the day when I broke React Native. <laughs> so to walk through uh, this event, I want to walk through first what happened, why it happened, and how we ended up fixing it. As you might have like guessed from the, the intro, this is going to be heavily Android specific because our build failures are related to Android only, luckily. Uh, but there is a lot to learn that goes beyond Android itself. So there are like a lot of lessons learned that we took home from this. So let's start from what happened specifically. So uh, within Meta and within the open, the broader community, we do have a group of people which we call the release crew. They are responsible of making new React Native releases. So on that day, we started the release of React Native 71, invoking this script, Bump OSS version. This like, simple script, what it does, it just bumps the React Native version and starts a publishing. That's why it also wants a circle CI token. And, and yeah, that day, we started publishing the first release candidate for 71. So what happens is we cut the branch, and then we do the first RC0, which is pretty unstable. Like, we know that when we cut the branch, the first RC is just going to be like a like test release. We, we start checking if things are stable or not, but it's not production ready. Within 71, there were a lot of changes. But one of the most important that actually was the underlying cause of this problem was this uh, RFC, number 508, which is the out of NPM package solution for React Native artifacts. Our NPM package was getting too big, and we could not publish the NPM anymore. So we had to find an alternative for our Android libraries, and we decided to move to Maven Central. So this website over here, which is really our core, if uh, you judge by the amount of CSS they use, is Maven Central. And Maven Central is nothing more than like a storage where binary files are, are stored. And if you search for the versions of React Native that are actually published there, you would see that historically we actually published versions there, like versions 11 or till versions 20 were published on Maven Central. 
Uh, this was between 2015 and 2016. At that point, the release manager, which, by the way, was a single person at that time, he thought that publishing to Maven Central was too complicated, and he just wanted to simplify the things and put everything inside the NPM package in a monolith package. The problem is that, for us, this solution doesn't scale anymore. Like, now, multiple years later, our package grew a lot. We have, like, a lot of new features. So we had to go back to Maven Central to release the new versions of React Native. And that's exactly why you see this tiny R uh, 710RC0, which was published on that fateful day, November 4th, 2022. So let's deep dive a little bit more like on why it happened. So what happened actually is just like, we published a new version of React Native, but why it triggered so much of a ripple effect to the ecosystem. So as I was saying, we had to implement this RFC because our NPM package was getting too big. And to fully appreciate how big it was getting, uh, this is the diagram of uh, the NPM package at the time. It's 100 meg 130 megabytes. So that meant that whenever you Yarn installed, you would have downloaded that. Even if you would have built an iOS only app, you al always get those artifacts. And the major offender is the Android folder, which contains on the Android library to build Android up. Actually, there is a catch. Uh, like, yeah, we, we could have made it bigger, but NPM doesn't accept packages which are like above 200 megabytes. And it responds with a HTTP 413, content too large. Uh, so, so yeah, we just had to move things out because they were getting too big. So the real problem that caused this issue once we moved to Maven Central is what we call plus dependencies or dynamic dependencies. So if you're building Android app, either if you're using Expo or if you're using the community CLI, you will have a build or gradle file. And inside your build or gradle file, at some point, there is this dependencies block where all the dependencies for Android are declared. And one of the dependencies is actually React Native. It's an implementation dependency, and this is the dependency string. To go a little bit more technical, actually, this is what it's called the Maven GAV coordinates. GAV stands for group, which is like the company which is publishing something, the A for artifact, which is the name of the library, and the version, which in our case was a plus. And, and yeah, like this is a terrible idea because plus means get the most highest version you ever find everywhere. Specifically, like, Gradle and Maven are using the two-string uh, algorithm to compare and find the highest. So, yeah, you, you get, like, you probably get where, where the problem is starting to, to happen at this point. Uh, but there are actually a couple of other things that I want to, to uh, deep dive here in your build of Gradle file. So, first, there is a fancy no-inspection Gradle dynamic version uh, suppression just above that line. So using plus dependencies on Android, it's terrible. Like, I think it's terrible on any build tool because you are basically putting yourself to the mercy of the library. Uh, if you go on the Gradle documentation, there is this handling version which change over time. And only the first page, they have two warnings saying that using dynamic versions leads to unreproducible builds. So what happens is basically that if you use a plus, you're sort of lazy, saying like, yeah, just give me the latest version of anything. And then at some point, things might build, and then some moments later, I publish an updated version of the library, and, and things don't build anymore, or behave weirdly. So this is sort of an anti-pattern. Like, but there is also another thing uh, that is uh, useful to fully understand here why we had, we had this plus dependency. So it was relevant in that context. We had this plus dependencies because we were getting that dependency from node modules. There was a comment next to it mentioning that. And so to fully understand what was the setup, we have to look inside the node modules folder. So let's look what's inside node modules React Native Android. So the, 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 the folder setup will look like this. We have like com, Facebook, React, which is like uh, a collection of folder which follows the same uh, 
structure of the group, and then we have the name of the artifact inside a version. So in this case, for example, I was in React Native 68, and so I will have only one folder for 068 with the files inside. And the Android library, which is consumed, and you use to build the final app. So what we practically did, we moved this folder from the NPM package to Maven Central. In this diagram, I actually cheated a little bit. There are more files, like, um, like SHA and other files. But effectively, if you go on Maven Central, on the same website I was showing before, you will see the same exact file. So what we were doing, we were shipping a Maven local repository inside the NPM package. This worked with the plus dependencies as long as we would have not published a higher version on any other public repository. And yeah, the problem is that at some point we did. And we were like not aware of this side effect. This is what we call that like a ticking bomb that was waiting to explode at some point. So how we actually fixed it? Uh, yeah, it, it took us some time first to fully understand the, the implication of this. Because if we go back to this script, you might just say, OK, the problem is the plus dependency. How about I just like replace it with the version of React Native that I'm using, no? Like, I'm 68. That will short circuit the logic. I will ju just get the version that I need. That's not so easy. Because if you're building React Native apps, you probably have a lot of dependencies. For example, you might have reanimated in your node modules. Reanimated also has a build or cradle file. And reanimated doesn't want to specify the React Native version they depend on, even. They want to select whatever the user wants. So it turns out that every library out there also had a plus dependency in their build or cradle file. So even if you try to patch yours, the library will bring in a plus dependency. Dependency, dependency resolution on uh, native platforms works differently than Node. So it works in the sense that React Native, the, the, the Android library, is resolved and the version with the highest number is picked and prevails among everyone. So in this case, the, re the reanimated version will result to the highest and will override the one that is inside your project. You probably get the complexity here. So this was not an easy fix. We had to like brainstorm a bit. So what we did, while I was on the plane, I sort of opened a GitHub issue. I tried to open a GitHub issue with the plane Wi-Fi. Uh, and uh, yeah, we started explaining what was the problem. And we distributed a script to people to add inside their build a Gradle file to fix the issue. Uh, and that sort of worked. But the problem is that every project out there will have to apply this script, which was like kind of a kind of a pain. Then we started discussing with the rest of the release crew, and we realized actually w what we can do is we can do patch releases. Like we can make a point release for for the most popular React Native version out there. And so that you will just have to update the version, and you will get that script automatically. And here I want to call out, like, I want to give a big shout out to the folks that worked over the weekend to fix this, like specifically Lorenzo, Eli, Rick, and all the other folks uh, that uh, worked over the Sunday to ship those versions. So I think they deserve a round of applause. Like, releasing older versions of anything, it's not easy. Like, you will have the CI which updates their tools, and you want to release a thing that uh, maybe needs a really old version of Java, or you just don't know what's the state of the branch, which you haven't touched since two years. So releasing things is hard. I think that this time we did, like, we really went the extra mile, because we keep, a, we keep an eye on the number of downloads for each version. And we released till 63, which covers 99% of the market share at that time. So uh, really, our best intent was to make sure that, yeah, OK, we broke React Native, but we tried to do the best to sort of uh, make it uh, working as soon as possible. The actual resolution was to ask Sonatype which is the company which is running Maven Central, to remove those artifacts. 
Initially, we thought that this was not possible because Maven Central is uh, immutable storage. So they don't allow to remove libraries. They just tell you like, hey, yeah, you screwed up your release, just publish a new version. Uh, but in this case, for us, publishing any new version would have just like exacerbated the problem. So we opened the ticket with them. They uh, luckily uh, helped us removing those artifacts, which fully resolved the problem. So there are a couple of, of lessons learned that uh, I personally take home and also our team took home from this. So first, this problem now is fully fixed. Uh, we sort of inside the React Native Gradle plugin uh, added a lot of safety measures that prevents these kind of issues from happening in the future. Uh, and then like last year, we uh, implemented the release support window. Actually, the release support window was implemented like a couple of weeks before this incident, but it was not enforced at that time yet. But we really understood the importance of being more intentional on the versions of React Native that we want to support. And with support here, I mean the versions that we will do patch releases. So in this specific case, this was like an extraordinary event. Like we literally bo broke builds for everyone and we decided to go the extra mile because we just felt it was like unfair to sort of, while we were working on a new release, break the workflow for a lot of other people and we wanted really to, uh, like we really care about our community, we really care about our users and we really wanted to fix the things as soon as possible. But in general, we um, support those last three uh, miners. You can find the release support window on the Re React Native Releases Working Group. And, and yeah, like the, the fact that we focus on these last three minors allows us first to like prioritize and focus on the versions that people are actually using. Again, uh, same graph, we keep an eye on the, on the like, uh, what's the version distributions of React Native. And uh, by supporting those last three versions, we cover 75% of the market share, uh, which is like, uh, it's, it's quite high. But this is also important, like, uh, this helps me to reiterate how important it is for you to update the React Native version and stay up to date with, this, uh, with those releases. Uh, another thing that I take home is uh, the incident response time. I personally believe we were like slow to respond. And uh, for a number of reasons. First, because this is like, this is, was an open source incident. Like, we don't have any telemetry. We don't know if your builds are working or not. Like, we don't inspect your builds, so it's really hard to even understand what's going on. Um, so, to fully understand the incident response time, I actually want to work through uh, what are our incident levels at Meta. We use the SAV levels, those are like an indus industry standards, and you can find like plenty of uh, material about the meta incident culture, uh, and like talks only on that if you're interested to, to deep dive more. But uh, let me just work through which they are. So the lowest one is SAV4, which we open whenever we need to give like an heads up. Like maybe we know that something might go wrong, for example, when we did the monorepo migration for React Native, where we moved uh, like a lot of code, we opened a SAF4 because when moving a lot of code, things might stop building for internal users or, or so, just like as a, as a precaution. Then we have SAF3, which is like significant problem, resolution is moderate or high priority. Like mm, something is broken and we should start looking into it, but it's, it's not on fire yet. Then we have SAV2, which is a major problem. Resolution is very high priority, like something a, lo a lot of users are affected. Then SAV1, which is red alert, whole hands on deck, like things are going on fire really badly, and this should be like a number one priority for people to fix. And then we have also SAV0, which is like company level crisis, like things are down across multiple mm, products. The problem of like we have those like, you know, sentences, but they really depend team by team. So what is a SAV1 for a team can be a SAV3 for another one and vice versa. In this case, we realized that this was a, a huge problem and we opened a SAV2 for it. But we were slow at opening the SAV2, as I said before, because it's hard to monitor what happens in the open source community because, like, we, again, we don't track your builds, we don't track any information other than the downloads from NPM, which are really noisy. 
So, so yeah, now we are uh, keeping a closer look at social media like Twitter, Reddit, and other f um, like other platforms where people might just go and complain about things that not, don't work as a source of information for deciding whether that's uh, an incident uh, that we need to open or not. Another thing that we take home is uh, libraries' best practices. So the problem in this case was exacerbated by libraries having those like, like anti-patterns that are scattered across uh, the community. Like historically, like if you go on the React Native website, we do have create React Native library as uh, a tool that is recommended to create new libraries. But the problem is that we haven't really like there are no strict guidance on how you need to create a React Native library. And people keep on like coping other other build script from other libraries and so on. This leads to a lot of anti-pattern that are scattered across across the ecosystem and uh, makes those kind of problems hard to handle because you don't know what's the ergonomics of a library. So in the coming months, uh, we will be taking a closer look together with Coldstack and the community to create React Native library to make sure that the output of that generator is consistent with what we believe are the best practices for creating React Native libraries. And then a couple of uh, yeah, colorful takeaways. The first one, let's go back to this script, which was invoked on that fateful day. That fateful day was a Friday. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, do not release on Friday. Actually, I think that in this case, we got lucky, personally. Like, I think uh, what happened is that this release was sort of doomed. Like, I if you look at the um, uh, Git branch, uh, whenever you see like a revert bump version number, it's an attempt to publish, and that failed. So uh, over the week, we tried to publish seven times, and we actually started publishing on Tuesday, and then we went to Thursday, and then we went to Friday. Friday morning, and we felt like, okay, Friday morning, it's fine, we're gonna have time. And this is RC0, like, how is that going to affect users, no? Like, come on. Uh, but yeah, there might be ripple effects. In this case, we got really lucky, because happening on a Friday, allowed us to have the weekend to fully understand the issue and uh, pu publish those patch releases. If that would have happened on a Monday, we would have disrupted people working on React Native like on the start of a working week for the whole week. So by Monday morning, you already had like a full, uh, like, like, a, like a GitHub issue that describes what is the command they need to do to unblock you. We did communications on Twitter, on our official channel, so we tried, like we did our best diligence to sort of resolve this situation over the weekend. So we got lucky this time, but we might not be lucky next time. So don't release on Friday. And then the last takeaway is, is that like, airplane Wi-Fi is just like, not great if you need to deal with incidents, so <laughs> try to don't be on a plane uh, when you need to deal with an incident. So. I hope you enjoyed this story. You can find uh, the postmortem of this event on our official blog if you want to understand more on like what happened actually, what were the root causes, and so on. And with this, I want to thank you very much for listening. <laughs>